and welcome back to Clearwater Marine Aquarium's virtual field trip. My name is Katie and I'm a marine educator here at the aquarium. Today we're going to be talking about animal training. Animal training is teaching a specific response to a specific condition or signal. Many different kinds of animals can be trained. You may have a dog or cat at home that you train. Sharks can be trained like here in this habitat. Sea turtles, dolphins, and our river otters. Our animals' day-to-day -day lives are much like our day-to-day -day lives. So if you think about it, when you're in school or when you're learning at home, you're doing what we call cognitive behaviors, which is using your brain to learn different things. If you're in PE class or now maybe you're out riding your bike, you're getting exercise. And we also do high energy behaviors to give our animals exercise. You also might spend some time playing with your favorite toys or doing your favorite hobby. Well, our dolphins here, they have EEDs or environmental enrichment devices, basically toys that they also play with. You may also make sure that you eat nice and healthy, getting your vegetables and go to the doctor every once in a while to get a checkup. And that's also like our animals here, getting husbandry or doing different medical checkups to make sure they're all healthy. The training that we use at CMA is called positive reinforcement. This means that we strengthen wanted behaviors with a reward and weaken unwanted behaviors by ignoring them. So what we do is if an animal care specialist was to ask an animal for a behavior and they did the behavior correctly, they would receive a reward, which could be a fish. If they did it incorrectly or did not do that behavior asked, they would simply ignore the behavior wait a few seconds and try again. So in an example of using this to an animal, if they were to ask Winter to lay on her side, and she did, she would receive a reward. If she decided to swim away, they would simply wait and try again. Now rewards can be many different things. It could be fish, it could be belly rubs, or maybe their favorite EED or a toy. Just like you might value something more than something else, our animals might as well. They have their own personalities just like we do. For example, you might enjoy reading more than your brother or sister, who instead of reading would much rather be playing soccer outdoors. We're out here having some enrichment time with winter. As you can see, we're actually working on popping bubbles. Bubbles are absolutely fun enrichment. Now enrichment adds variety to their life. It's really important to make sure that they're being mentally stimulated and play is the best way to do that. We have lots of toys or environmental enrichment devices. Well, in the movie, they had a little different of a rubber duck. It was kind of a ring rubber duck. This one's Winter's current rubber duck. Now they each have their own interests. They definitely have their own unique personalities. Uh, so it's important that we learn what they enjoy as individuals. This is one of Winter's favorite toys. Uh, she seems to interact with all the time. She really likes to make bubble rings with it. That's one of her favorite toys. It's not one of Hope's favorite toys. So they definitely have their own different interests that they'll interact with. Through using positive reinforcement, it's entirely up to the animal whether or not they want to participate in the training session. Here's an example of how positive reinforcement might work for you. For example, if you were to get $20 every time you cleaned your room, you probably wouldn't think twice about getting your chores done. Or if you got your favorite candy bar every time you finished your whole dinner, you'd probably always have a clean plate. So that's just an example of how positive reinforcement could and may work in your own life. Now there's two main training tools that our animal care specialists use. One is called a bridge, which is their whistle. 
So a lot of times when the dolphin does the behavior correctly, they're not always right there to be able to give them that reward. So the bridge means that a reward is coming and that the behavior was done correctly. So essentially it bridges the moment that they do the behavior to the reward. The second one is a target pull. So a target pull is essentially an extension of our hands. So let me show you what one is. So this is a target pull. And first we'd start to teach the dolphin to target to our hand, maybe a part of their body. And then once they do this, we're able to bring in the target pull. This is especially useful if we're trying to teach them something maybe in the middle of the pool where our hand can't reach. As they start to learn the behavior, we can fade the target pull away and maybe eventually they will do the correct behavior with just a hand signal. So you're gonna see the target pull and the whistle or the bridge in the training session coming up. Perfect. Hi guys, my name is Evan and I also have my friend Nicholas here. We're gonna be showing you guys uh, a couple of the reasons that we train our animals. Of course, how we train our animals. Behaviors that you guys might see if you come to visit us here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Um, so first and foremost, we train utilizing positive reinforcement. And what that simply means is we wanna draw a lot of attention to all of the times that Nicholas does something correct. So basically, if he gets the correct answer, we're gonna throw a dolphin party. Um, what a dolphin might like to receive at a dolphin party is of course going to be his fish. Let's see if he wants this one. Perfect. We also might utilize environmental enrichment devices that have been conditioned to be valuable to each individual animal, or something that we've recently conditioned with Nicholas is jello. Now you guys might be wondering why our dolphins get jello. It's actually an extra source of water for them. So if you think about how you make gelatin at home, it's simply gelatin powder, typically sugar and food coloring. He doesn't have any of that in his and a lot of extra water. Now we can also utilize clapping, cheering, tactile. So back rubs and belly rubs. These are among some of Nicholas's all time favorite things to receive at his dolphin party. Now simply when behavior incorrect because our dolphins are not perfect, we ignore all of that failure. We don't want to draw any attention to it. Applying is called an LRS. That stands for a least reinforcing stimulus. And all that is is a three to five second neutral response. We're going to count three to five in our head without changing anything about our body language. Then we can even tell him, hey, great job for accepting that LRS. And we simply just move on with our session. Now, the three reasons that we do teach our animals, the first one we're gonna talk about are medical behaviors. So these are called husbandry behaviors, management behaviors, and these are gonna be all of the questions that our vets are gonna be expecting our animals to know. So simple things like how to lay out and let a vet examine your body, okay? A couple of those layout behaviors. This one is called a dorsal layout. He's gonna allow us to see his entire back, his dorsal fin, if I trailed my hand down, he would end up giving me his tail flukes. He also knows how to do quarter turns. So he's gonna let us see that lateral side. Now our vets might be looking at different things like different body compositions. So we're gonna really be looking at the different shape of his body. Come on, try that one again. There's that belly. Nicely done. That was beautiful. Thank you. We can also ask just to go straight into that ventral layout, which would be belly up in the air. Trail him down. He's going to allow me to see those tail flukes. So we want to make sure that our animals are very comfortable with us looking over each and every portion of their body. That way we can take ultimately the best care of them possible. That was perfect, bud. Good job. Now, one of the next reasons that we teach our animals is for learning or cognitive behaviors. Out in the wild, these guys would be swimming many miles for the sole purpose of being able to hunt and catch their fish. He's not faced with those exact same challenges here, but that would definitely utilize a lot of brain power exploring that environment. So we wanna still be able to exercise his brain. We do that by teaching him some really fun concepts. And to let you guys in on a little secret, Nicholas happens to really enjoy learning new behaviors 
more importantly, succeeding at those new behaviors. So we're gonna try one of his concepts called wait and go. Now, you guys might have noticed that uh, typically when we show him a hand signal, he responds immediately, within three to five seconds. So that was perfect, okay? That's followed up by the whistle, which we call It simply tells him yes. So whatever he was doing the moment that he heard that whistle is exactly correct. Now with the concept of wait and go, I'm actually gonna show him a wait signal first. I'm then gonna show him that same behavior. And you guys can see he actually did not do that behavior until he sees the go. That was perfect, good job. Very excited for those uh, behaviors that exercise his brain and are a little bit more challenging to him. Now that third and final category that we teach our animals for is for high energy or exercise behaviors. Obviously this one is to get him his physical exercise. Again, they'd be swimming lots of miles out in the wild. Now all of the exercise behaviors that you guys are gonna see us asking for uh, throughout their day are just extensions of natural behavior in the wild. So something like a bow, he's gonna be straight across. That is a behavior that they naturally do they want to get a better look at something underneath them or if they're hunting for uh, different schools of fish. Now to let you guys in on a secret, that second little jump that he did is not what I asked for. That's Nick's big giant personality coming out. He tends to really enjoy uh, celebrating after he gets the correct answer to something. So you guys got a little bit of an insight into his big giant personality. Now, one of the tools you guys might see us utilizing throughout our day to teach any of those behaviors is this target pull right here. Now, this is simply an extension of our hand. So the very first target that we're going to teach them is how to touch that rostrum, which is the bottlenose portion of their face, to the end of our hand, just like so. Okay, this is actually a behavior that PJ is currently learning, one of our newest residents to our aquarium here. So they simply learn to touch that bottlenose portion to their, of their face uh, to the end of our hand the same way that they learn to touch the buoy. Once they understand, hey, I get a lot of treats for simply touching that, they can then learn to follow that item. So you guys can see Nicholas simply follows it. Good job, bud. This is gonna allow us to teach any and all of the behaviors. So we might make the follows a little bit harder each time, such as if he was going to follow that down and under the water in that somersault shape. And this will repeat over and over and over again. We'll pair that with a hand signal. Boy, good job. Now I hope you guys learned something hanging out here with my friend Nicholas. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let us know. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Evan and Nicholas, for showing us training in action. Now it's time for you to do your at-home activity. Your at-home activity is to make your own training pool. So go ahead and download the sheet for instructions. In the next episode, you're going to learn about Nicholas the Dolphin and a training game where you can use the target pool that you made. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.